All right. Hey, everyone. Uh, this Hello. is uh, the second video in the introduction to the ARM uh, Cortex A series or the A Arch 64 uh, architecture. And just to remind you, this is the um, A class of CPUs, the architecture for that. And we are going to discuss the V8 architecture and 64 bit uh, implementation, so to speak. Right. Now, in the previous uh, kind of video, we discussed about um, the A class CPU uh, being something of this nature, where you have like the four ELs, which will come to again uh, in a while. And then we talked about like the non-secure in the secure world. And we said that there is no EL2 in the secure world. So the apps ran here, uh, the OSs ran here, the hypervisor ran here, and uh, and essentially this much part uh, we said was the secure part. We somewhere touched upon the notion of TZ or trust zone and non-trust zone. Right. Okay, so and then towards the end somewhere we left off with in the the manuals relating to ARM, which is architecture reference manual, uh, the technical reference manual and the programming guide. Yeah. Uh, this current document happens to be the programming guide that we will use to, uh, to guide our study uh, of the ARM A class of controllers. So Mohammed here will kind of walk us through what different documents mean and then we'll go ahead and see what we have uh, in the programmer's guide for us. Awesome. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks. Let's, let's go ahead then. Cool. I will go ahead here. Yeah. Yeah. We found ourselves a nice spot. Yes. Okay. So uh, we have like three major terms uh, mm -hmm. to deal with. One is ARM or documents uh, ARM. Which is, which stands for architecture reference menu, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, manual. Yeah. And then another term is TRM, which is technical reference manual. And this is the test of your. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Almost done. It's... Yeah. Typing and then third one is programmer's guide, which is right. the PG. Yeah. Okay, and the programmer's guide is the, the one document. which we are currently yeah. referring. Okay, so uh, before we go, you know, further ahead, I wanted to kind of shed light on when to refer to which document, right? Okay, and yeah. what sort of info you should expect in uh, which document. Mm -hmm. So first one is the architectural reference menu, and this would generally be the biggest of them all. So this has like what 13 K ish pages, mm. uh, the largest yes. of all, mm -hmm. right? And what this contains is the, uh, details on, a, on, you know, how an A class score should behave, be it any, okay. any A class score in the market cortex, a, a 53, a 55, a 72. Mm -hmm. You know, and the other extreme cores, high end cores, right. all of them will have different implementation details, but then all of them adhere to the architecture reference manual. So, mm. whatever mm. is written there, they should obey that. Right. And, you know, at this point, maybe, Mohammed, I'll mm -hmm. call out the difference between architecture. Yeah. Yeah. I think that is, uh, we should maybe, you know, give an analogy, if you will. Right and micro mm. architecture so architecture is just documents that specify how not how but what a thing should do a thing meaning in this case cpu yeah. so what it should do right a micro architecture is an actual implementation mm. right it's the actual cpu like gate level stuff, you know, RTL yeah. and all of that, which right. does implement what uh, needs to be done in some form or way. Yeah. And so you might implement different processors, mm. 
that implement the same hmm. architecture but are different micro architecture yeah. so few of the differences might be one of the arm cores let's say has you know 10 stage pipeline hmm. the other one let's say has 15 or 7 some something like that right so those are like the micro architecture differences hmm. or micro architecture meaning that it's a implementation yeah now um, analogy would be let's say you know an architecture document describes what a car should do right uh, so you know that is like the architecture what the car should do and then the actual cars different kinds you know trucks uh, sedans crossovers all of those are different implementations and we will call those micro architecture hmm. so to speak right they all are cars but implement the same functionality in a right. very different way so i mean just to again go a bit deeper here so the thing which you know if let's say there was an architecture reference manual for cars or automobiles mm -hmm. it would have stuff like hey you know we should have a steering which should be generally circular we should have like mm -hmm. three pedals mm -hmm. you know little mm -hmm. brake and uh, clutch right mm -hmm. stuff like that and that mm -hmm. is something which every automobile manufacturer will have to adhere to mm -hmm. at least for a country right right and it does not talk about you know what type of engine a car should have it could be diesel okay. it could be petrol it could be right. ev right? right and that is like implementation design choice mm -hmm. and the automobile manufacturer is free to choose whatever they want correct so that freedom and the choices they make to create the final end product is micro architecture, micro -architecture. the directions are the architecture yeah okay and so Let's get rid of this. And, yeah, and this ahead. is very important, you know, to fix, uh, to basically separate things out in, in you know, in two categories, mm -hmm. uh, what needs to be done and how to do it. Yes. So what needs to be done again, you know, is the architecture, is the architecture and how to do it is the micro architecture. And the importance for, with this abstraction is that you are basically, you know, sort of indirectly achieving a contract is to yes. you know between multiple independent entities like yes. you know i am a proce processor manufacturer i want to do my own things hmm. you should maybe you know is making his own processor he wants to do his th things in his own way but if hmm. there is no contract between um, uh, among us then the software writing would become very tricky yeah 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 right. and for those reasons the architecture Actually, is, is the one yeah so so for us for us who are writing software who are concerned with you know developing some code which runs mm -hmm. on a specific architecture we generally mm -hmm. don't have to concern ourselves with how it is implemented for the right. most part it just works on any core any processor of that class right right all right so Perfect. okay so with ARM, it will have information about, again, just repeating, uh, ARM will have information about what needs to be done. All all of the things which a A-class score should, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, <coughs> should follow or should adhere to. Yeah. Right. Now the second document. Now this is specific to an implementation so mm. you would find yeah the stuff you know related to micro architecture mm. you will not find how it is designed because you know again yeah. no one wants to reveal that but mm. uh, the 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 design parameters which you know some of the design parameters which we just mentioned like you know pipelines the number and, of mm. stages of pipelines the caches right mm. the set ways the associativity of the caches different which are again configuration different modes. configuration stuff like that would be detailed out in the trm I see. I see. So each of the ARM A class score ideally would have its own TR. So A53, right. if you look for, you know, hey, A53, Cortex mm. A53 TRM, you would find mm. a downloadable link. Mm. Cortex A72 would have its own TRM. Right. So it will have like a lot of stuff which is design specific, but, you know, mm. it doesn't. It, does not strictly fall in the architecture mm -hmm. right so 
Uh, these are like some implementation related configs or configs. information right. that the developer can leverage, leverage essentially. Yeah. So, you know, one other cool thing is, you know, the floating point units, right? Mm. So a core can have one or even more, like, you know, you can have more than one floating point units. Each core right. can leverage that. So yeah. such, such details would be present in TR, right. like okay. how, uh, but, and also, you know, if, uh, uh, let's say if you're looking at one Cortex A53 TRM, there are some, mm-hmm. uh, configurable parameters mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. cache, like, mm-hmm. you know, SRAMs, um, right. um, what else, uh, the number so, of SIMD registers, fair. stuff like that. Fair. Uh, fair. So, so the direction that we are wanting to take now is maybe, you know, okay. So we have introduced these two, mm. what we can do is introduce this and yeah. dwell into the details of this right. and then go backwards. Right. Right. Just right. because, you know, programmers would mostly use this mm. occasionally mm. use this. And when like debating with an architect, maybe they'll use this. Mm-hmm. Debating like, with an architect or, or they want to, you know, Basically, they are in a situation where they want to see how hmm. the core should be here. Should, yes, yes. And that is where I usually find myself, you know, looking at hmm. the ARM and mm-hmm. seeing. So basically, you know, it doesn't add much value into going through ARM hmm. like right now. Yes. You know, it's, it's first of all, it's a very large document and yeah. it contains, it is filled with info. Yeah. So instead we'll, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, look at the programmer's guide for now. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then when you, as you said, right, when you land into some issues mm-hmm. or you want to debate of, you know, about how things should work, then you mm-hmm. go consult ARM and see, right. you know, whether the theory holds or not. Yes. That makes sense. So yeah. I think that will, will kind of, you know, follow the same path here. Correct. Uh, so then so let's talk about you know, the third. Yes. Programmer's guide. Let, yeah. Let me get rid of all of this. Right. So I can scribble a lot more. Yeah. Go ahead. Maybe you can start. To yeah. So yeah. Programmer's guide is actually the doc, you know, which I tend, I find myself referring to the most. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's because, you know, uh, this is the doc written, you know, from our perspective, our meaning the software developer or programmers perspective. Mm-hmm. And here the details are mentioned in a way as to what a programmer needs to do in order to get something configured, something meaning it could be, you know, page tables, it could be interrupts, it could be exceptions. It Mm -hmm. could be running your code into different in different exception levels, changing security states and stuff like that. Right. And this is exactly why, or rather this is the exact document that we'll follow to do all our experiments. Okay, perfect. Also, maybe answer this question. Mm -hmm. Um, Is this generic? Or is this also core specific? Uh, This is generic. Okay, this is for the most part, it is generic. Mm -hmm. But you would find you know, some bits and pieces where they would Mm -hmm. have mentioned, hey, this is implementation specific, go consult your TRM. Okay, Okay. so on very rare rare occasions, they would have, you know, that footnote mentioned. But I, I would say, you know, for the most part, it is completely mm-hmm. generic. It is completely mm-hmm. generic to, or, you know, pertaining to that particular architecture in which in our case, we, it is uh, AR64. Right. Uh, is... Right. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, by the way, did anything relating to my audio changed? Uh, nope. I... Okay. 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 Perfect. The reason to that is something, something, some thing popped up in between ah, okay. anyways. Okay. So what in, in effect then, so, mm-hmm. uh, the generic programmers guide here will help us program a 53, a 72 and others, others, other yeah. micro architectures. Yeah. 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 Right. Okay. Perfect. Cool. Okay. So do we want to go through the details of this then yes, and introduce yes. what all it includes? Yeah. Again, uh, I'll just, mm-hmm. Go ahead. Sorry. So I just wanted to mention one quick uh, point. So nowadays, you know, I think we briefly talked about in our last video as well, that there are few companies which have, you know, achieved tremendous uh, feats 
in making their own arm right, course right so what would you know their development look like so mm. basically because they are making their own micro architecture design so for mm. example qualcomm has made uh, x elite uh, mm -hmm. apple has their own m1 you know m series right mm -hmm. <clears throat> so what would they have done is they would have thoroughly taken the architecture reference right. manual right they would have started from started here. from there and mm. they would have started you know designing their processor mm. which exactly adheres to what is there in arm yes and if that doesn't happen then any software which runs on you know traditional arm cores mm. may may break in you know their design yes their implementation yeah. yeah so that is what they would have adhered to but right. you know basically their trm would be completely different from what you find online online yeah this this would be like their like proprietary their version. proprietary yeah yeah and they would have you know all sorts of implementation details which are mm -hmm. not well not shared exposed not yeah, yeah right and then the programmer's guide would still be would the same would still be the same yeah if there are uh, yeah okay i think the programmer's guide would call out implementation dependent right the only i think we, should, uh, we can add this point that arm also allows you know uh, the designers to have their own OEM instructions. Mm, right. That is where, you know, their programmer's guide would change. If they want to include those instructions, you know, as a, okay. uh, uh, a mm. as a platform for software developers. But true. Mm. It would be more of an extension though. Extension. Yeah. yeah. Cool. The, this PG will, remember, will remain as is right. and this will append to. It would be a super set of the, uh, the original PG right. with this addendum. Correct. And also, I think then they'll need to make changes to the compiler assembler. Yeah, yeah. Right, be, to right, be able to account right. to for be those to. custom yeah. instructions. Right, right. right. Okay. Exactly. Okay, perfect. So what we'll do then is maybe as a, you know, general, uh, general, let's say, strategy, what we'll do is we'll go through the index of, uh, you know, the programmer's guide today. Take a look at the other two documents in the next video. And from the third video, let's start to peel the onion. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. All right. So moving on. We will have the table yeah. of contents here. So let's rapidly walk through mm. what is what. So, here. The funny thing is, you know, before uh, actually starting off with our uh, video recordings, I and Piyush were trying to come up with some table of content. You know, which yeah. can, <laughs> which can, basically, you know, maintain the flow of, you know, the things which you want to deliver. Explain. But yeah. Ex but then it turns out, you know, the programmer's guide has done a very good job, uh, yeah. in yeah. essentially collating that info in the order we want to, uh, yeah, share. detail out. So mm. yeah, I think I'll just you know follow the same index basically right. for the most part. And also, you know, um, just adding to what you mentioned, Mohammed, which is if we complete this, you know, uh, topics, these topics, we would know that there is nothing else to be covered apart from vendor and, you know, hmm. um, implementation specific yeah, uh, yeah, stuff. Yeah. We would know that everything is covered and that's hmm. all what you need to hmm. know about. So I think um, then eight. viewers can also hold us against that, compare whether we actually, you know, delivered. No, yes, that would be a yes. sort of a test for us. Yeah. 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 Cool. Makes sense. All right. So then let's quickly talk about all of first off, you know, how many topics are there? About mm, I think 20 ish. Yeah, a 19. Yeah. Nine, yeah, 20 ish. All right. Let's go through them. Cool. Just maybe give an idea of what to expect <clears> and why <throat> it might be required. Right, right. So I like, you know, the the chapter one says how to use this book. It's it's nice. <laughs> Do give a read. You know, it's nice. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. So, you recommend that. Fine. Yeah. Actually, I start with that. You know, it it, it, it most of the times it tells us, you know, basically what we are going to talk about in the video. Hey, what to expect uh, in what okay. chapters. So yeah. I see. I see. Okay. 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 Anyway. So uh, this is mostly, you know, what is going on. What is going on? Yeah. <laughs> what what you should anticipate basically yeah, yeah. Uh, uh chapter two and three are again you know kind of we sort of hashed uh through most of the terms in the last lecture as mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. but this is covering you know basically three things one mm -hmm. is 
exception level. So I'm combining, you know, the zest of chapter twos and three here. So okay. if, if we can make a note of uh, three uh, keywords okay. uh, somewhere, okay. if you find some yes, white yes, yeah. yes. Okay. So one is exception level. Mm -hmm. uh, the second right, one. Okay. okay. L. Man, I'm right. sorry. I'm sort of forcing you to write in a uh, <laughs> in a rush, but uh, oh, exception ahead. level. Then you have uh, exception states, or they are called security states as well. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And okay. the third one is execution modes. Okay, modes. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. So and yeah, what are and, these? yeah so oh, actually actually hang on hang on I, mm -hmm. sorry i think i just you know uh kind of interrupted your line of thought mm -hmm. because i felt having this diagram diagram would help again. yeah makes sense right, so we have the good old right right and this is man we should just yeah i will sort of you know borrow your term brand brain tattoo this it, yeah. it's it's gonna pop up almost everywhere and in every right. video right right Okay, go ahead. Right. So, so this, yeah, this. exception levels. And this is what, you know, we discussed in depth in last video, which was EL0, EL1, EL2, and EL3, right? Mm -hmm. So chapter, I think, uh, yeah, chapter three kind of introduces what they are. Uh, mm -hmm. right? They will never talk about why they are. Mm -hmm. That is where, you know, I, I think, our job is to fill in that gap. Just Correct. To, just, uh, you know, insight. Uh, to provide the insight. Insight of that seed of, you know, why they are. Okay. Right. What could be the reason for it? Okay. Right. And ex exception states or security states are the worlds, or sometimes they are called worlds as well, mm -hmm. are the secure and non secure. And the mm -hmm. last one is execution modes, which is uh, 32 and 64. So they are called ARCH64 and ARCH32, respectively. Okay. Now, oh, okay, I'll... Mm -hmm. Right. So we are not going to talk about oh. ARCH32 mm -hmm. because that's too old. Yeah. And, you know, most modern processors or modern applications use ARCH64. ARCH64, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So exception levels, I hope uh, uh, folks uh, would know exception states as well like the same exception levels are kind of copied twice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, one is for you know the known secure code to run where you know our most of the apps would apps and kernel android mm -hmm. everything would run and secure world you would have only very few privileged apps mm -hmm. which will run on their own kernel uh, and mm -hmm. the example we looked at last time was fingerprint uh, uh, face auth or I think uh, credit card information and keying right, sort of things. Right. Right. right? Uh, yes. So these are pretty clear. And the last one, execution modes. Uh, now this is where you know this this sort of governs what mode the processor or, or that particular core is executing on. So whether it is mm -hmm. you know processing on 64-bit data or 32-bit mm -hmm. data. Mm -hmm. Now I would say, hey, if I have like capability of 64 bit, why would I even care about 32 bit, right? right. And the answer to that is software compatibility. Backward compatibility. Uh, backward yes. compatibility. Yeah. 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 So you would want, even though you know the uh, ARM architecture was A8 architecture was introduced somewhere in I think 2012 or 13, you still would want the software written prior to that to run run on those seamlessly on these cores, right? Yeah. And that is the reason you have, you know, this modes. Yeah. Okay. And so, yeah, we covered this and okay. Uh, how do you switch between exception levels, exceptions, execution states and execution modes? That obviously will, that obviously will co cover in detail, but yeah. uh, the gist is that there are registers, obviously everything is controlled by registers. Right. So there are registers and specific bit bits in those control registers, which govern what execution, what exception level, execution state, and execution mode our particular core is operating on. Right, right. So I think the, yeah, chapters two and three sort of go over that. Hmm. And um, from chapter four onwards, you would see, you know, 
basically the details about what a specific a core has mm -hmm. so you know it will have you know we'll start off with general purpose resistors then you will have lots and lots of special purpose resistors mm -hmm. right then you'll have mm -hmm. like uh here very important thing is processor state right mm -hmm. and the reason for that is because uh if you recall last time we saw there was so much juggling right mm -hmm. apps were getting juggled by kernel kernels were getting juggled by hypervisor right. even hypervisor was switching states between context ah, sorry between secure and non-secure worlds right. which was done by the secure monitor Okay. Now, when you are juggling or switching context, it is very necessary to capture the current state that hmm. processor was on. And if right. if we miss that, right, then basically you cannot get back to where you started. Return, true. Return. I just want to summarize this. So we have the CPU, which can go again, you know, between different states and yeah. different, uh, you know, security modes. modes. Uh, what you're saying is that this is essentially the programmer's model. Or at least part of it, mm -hmm. right? A programmer's uh, model, and then in each state there would be like some registers yeah. that we need to manipulate and save also, save, so that yeah. mm -hmm. we can return back from exactly, higher, exactly, yes, uh, yes, higher or lower uh, Low execution, execution, exactly. So all of all of uh, these registers right. provided here. Yeah, uh, this chapter has information. Information on. regarding that. Yeah. And depending on, for example, you know, like the 4.6 item, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so depending on whether you have neon and floating point enabled or mm -hmm. not, that would mean whether you have to save those registers or not. Understood. Okay. So, so if there are the FPU is available, then they're and active, then there are more registers. There are more saved. registers to be saved. And oh. each and every level has to be aware of that. So kernel and has to be aware, hey, whether app had that FPU enabled or not. So okay. I have to save that, you know, when process switching, the mm -hmm. hypervisor has to be aware whether the kernel had the FPU access or not. If it had, then hypervisor will have to you know, save those registers and so on. Understood. Okay, and so that's the fourth that's, one. Yeah. And then you have basically five, six, and seven uh, are, you can package them as, you know, the uh, I you can call them as ISA. Mm -hmm. It would have like you know what are the instructions. You know, basically mm -hmm. they are kind of divided into different types of instructions, right? Uh, mm -hmm. This uh, data processing, memory operating, a arithmetic, yeah. and stuff like that. Flow control, right? Uh, right. Okay, so <coughs> may, maybe um, let me put it this way. So these are essentially introducing us to now what language the CPU understands in terms mm -hmm. of zeros and ones. Right. But then with respect to that, first we look at what are the different mm. keywords available or mnemonics mm. available. Then after that, some instructions would be data processing related. Some would be memory access related, getting things from memory, saving things to the memory, so on and so forth. Some are branching and unconditional conditional mm. uh, you know, flow related or branching related. And then there are some instructions that help you control this or modify or influence the state of the cpu right uh, should it be in tz should it be in non secure right. should it switching be between one, levels and two. stuff like that yeah yeah so all of those go here mm -hmm. and by the way it's not, we talked about like registers up here that there are different registers mm -hmm. at each level what we are saying now is there are also instructions that mm -hmm. help you go from one level to another yeah okay. instructions like special instructions mm. which operate on those special you know system registers mm. which govern the flow of where our code is going to execute or where right. it is uh, right. executed and then this last chapter the seventh chapter here is essentially again you know right. the involvement of floating yes, point yes. unit the same thing. what instruction what instructions yeah what yeah. uh coding that we have you know how to handle single precision double precision and stuff like that right, right. uh on the chapter six piece i would want to add one thing quickly mm -hmm. so here uh, we saw that you know we have not just instructions but then there will be i think also a mention of addressing modes of mm -hmm. what addressing modes in each instruction Kind right. of, supports uh, supports right <coughs> sorry and uh, okay what i was gonna say yeah addressing modes 
and uh, uh, the mnemonics which we are going to talk about so if you are coming from the c world and we are mm-hmm. writing the c program we generally won't care about those right because you know the compiler would do the job for us right. but uh, later in our series we are kind of going to program you know on raspberry pi bare metal and when we say bare metal there is uh, basically no c, <laughs> no c. there is no with. c environment to start with yeah so right. we will have to use assembly there is no other way right and when you mention the c environment what you really mean is somebody needs to do some setup so that c related c. code exactly. the the machine code generated right. by c uh, as a result of c mm-hmm. that works correct right so for example the minimum the bare minimum would be you know setting up stack because the c code itself assumes that hey i have the stack, stack and it can available. just call functions here and there yes so uh, uh clearing out certain registers uh, you know uh setting up stack setting up bss clearing out bss section and stuff like that that has mm-hmm. to be done uh, that is the bare minimum Right. which some code has to do before you know the c environment is available right okay. uh so in bare metal we are going to need you know help of chapter 6 where we would have to find right. instructions you know basically which help us do the job mm-hmm. yeah okay Correct. cool so those were the seven chapters seven chapters oh, and now eight. comes the juicy part you know where i think uh, this is you know i have found myself referring to these chapters from 8 onwards Mm-hmm. where you know we develop some understanding of what a class processor is right, right. and you want to actually do some job so you mean mm-hmm. you mean assign some task or you know you are looking to do something this mm-hmm. is where you would consult mostly like yeah. hey i want to do something you know i want to let's say you know port my existing code to 64 bit architecture right right how uh, to what, go about doing how that. to go about doing that so these chapters sort of answer those questions right all right cool and i i i should mention i should mention that uh, chapter 8 and 9 basically were meant for you know for people who knew about 32 bit you know they had worked on v7 mm-hmm. and they wanted their code to port uh to move v8, over to 64 to move over to 64 yeah okay. okay so this is where you know the that uh, crux lies mm-hmm. and yeah this is very important exception handling now i would say this is like one of the most important concepts in in a class because right. this is something which is only i should say you know relevant to a class you would not mm-hmm. find it in m class or r class so right. and once we get hang of that right uh we would be able to handle the handle exception and the interrupts interrupts yeah deal yeah. with them as it right okay. so this is where you know you Uh, so initially on earlier chapters we saw okay what registers to do what registers to write to change exception levels you know uh, security worlds and stuff mm-hmm. like that but mm-hmm. then how to go about doing this and what all you need to have in place in the other firmwares where you are mm-hmm. so one would be jumping from and jumping to the caller yeah, and call right, 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 so right. you need to have like you know some data structures uh, in place in order mm-hmm. to successfully execute that execute that transition job. transition okay. yeah okay. so this this chapter would uh, sort of you know detail out that stuff mm-hmm. and then okay juicy stuff okay caches mm-hmm. so this chapter has everything to do with cache okay you have instruction cache you have data cache l1 l2 you know some some systems even have l3 how you mm-hmm. maintain that what do we mm-hmm. mean by maintenance like uh, you mm-hmm. want to clean up invalidate you know depending on certain right. operations uh, software mm-hmm. does you would want to do all of this right. uh, you want to set the cache policies mm-hmm. like whether you want it to be write back you know write through stuff like mm-hmm. that uh also cache related cache related details. stuff in chapter mm-hmm. 11 then chapter 12 i think in the name says it all it's memory management unit so right. it will start with you know uh, how uh, the page table descriptor looks like you know what are the different levels uh, how to calculate different levels of mm-hmm. uh, translation then you have not just levels but you have stages as well mm-hmm. right? Uh, right depending on uh, depending on the v- Uh, which level you are actually translating from so right. e- exception level you are working right uh, 
so I, maybe I'll, I'll, you know, mm -hmm. kind of provide a picture here as to what people can imagine. Mm -hmm. So typically, until this point, all our experiments, if we do those, so we would have CPU reaching straight to the memory. Mm -hmm. That is how you know bare metal stuff works. But once you throw in Linux kernel and all of that, the Linux kernel requires something called virtual addresses. Yeah. Right. And the virtual address means that each program will will float a range of same addresses, like from zero mm. to whatever four billion or sixty-four bits, right? Combinations of those. Mm. So this is emitting the you know some address in this range, and this guy is also. Uh, emitting address within this range and that needs to go out of the CPU. So what happens is there is this memory management unit which will do the translation from this 0 to 2 mm -hmm. to the 64 address range to something that's actually existing in the memory. Right. This would be and the physical address. Right. So what the address available here we call virtual address and the address available here we call physical address mm -hmm. and the translation is done by MMU. Yeah. And to enable and program the MMU, we have this section. This chapter. And here, just to you know, throw uh, another piece of complexity. So just mm -hmm. so we are aware that you know what to expect when the time comes. So this was true where you had a model where we had you know apps, kernel, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's it. Kernel had mm -hmm. like the full complete picture of the sub of the system. Right. And now when we throw <clears throat> hypervisor. In, into the mix. Mm -hmm. So hypervisor is another layer of abstraction which abstracts out the actual right. system from the kernel. Okay. So you would have one more translation. So that PA which we wrote would not be actual physical address. It would right. be something called in ARM's terminology, it is called intermediate physical address, right. so IPA. Right. Maybe you can draw another diagram. Yeah. So what Mohammed is mentioning is you have the CPU. And if it is running in the hypervisor mode, then there are like two stages of yeah. translation. One is the virtual address, then there is intermediate virtual address, and mm -hmm. then there is physical address. Physical address, yeah. IPA and... Uh, oh, sorry, intermediate mm -hmm. physical address. Physical address and physical address. So here you see, you know, uh, the complexity has now uh, doubled basically. Hmm. And the latency as well. Uh, hmm. So if you, if you recall in the last... Uh, in the video, last video, yeah. we mm. sort of, you know, mentioned this one point that uh, the latency increases as you go from uh, top to bottom. So if you Wait, have all... The latency, the latency decreases as you go. Sorry, from... yeah, 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 my bad. Decreases as you decreases. go. Decreases. Things speed up. Things speed up. Yeah. Because if you are in EL three, you don't have to go through two stages. You're yes, just... you just straight yeah. goes to yeah. physical edges, right? Okay. Cool. And of course, you know how this translation happens, why this is required, why can't we do away with that? All yeah. of that is topic for like next right, right. set of videos. Yeah. But know that memory manage management unit is specifically important for operating systems. Mm. You can think Linux kernel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cool. Okay, let's move on. Awesome. And it is, so actually I don't have to, so moving yeah. on. Uh, Chapter 13. Now, this is very interesting. You know, memory ordering mm -hmm. is something which kind of occupies, as per my understanding, it occupies a lot of space in the core. Space meaning the design, design the number of gates. Device. Yeah, the number of right. gates occupied by just this memory ordering. I mean, mm -hmm. it is called out of order execution unit. Mm -hmm. So what it does is, even though, you know, we compiled our code in, in, in a, in a in a series of instructions, there is right. no guarantee that they would execute in the same order. Right. There is a unit in hardware. But I have to interrupt and mention this just so that, you know, mm -hmm. the imagination is clear, which is instructions will be executed in the order that the processor sees fit. Yeah. But as seen by the programmer, it will be exactly the order of instructions that he, she has written. Like functionally, they functionally, would be. Yes. 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 Functionally, they would be exactly the same. So they would achieve right. the same function as the code which hmm. uh, the programmer had intended it to right. achieve. Right. But then in 
in in a hardware actually you know uh, uh, instruction which is like 10 lines below the execution to be executed can in theory execute, execute. right and this you know essentially speeds up a lot and this is the key in you know all the a cores now not all the a cores come with this you know some uh, low power cores mm -hmm. uh, with mm -hmm. low area don't have the I mean, out of out of order of execution, order execution. Right. And that's where the micro architecture. Yes, exactly, exactly. Do you have drum brakes? Do you right. have, you know, uh, disc brakes? Uh, which mm. brakes do you have? Those these are right. those kind of details. And one point to mention, Piyush, uh, before we go ahead, mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. you know, okay, cool. We have this feature, you know, where you know hardware magically can figure out mm -hmm. a great, a correct order, you know, jumbled mm -hmm. order, which has, achieves uh, you know more mm -hmm. efficiency than the code mm -hmm. we wrote. But right. then think about, you know, use cases where, you know, uh, you are just entering into the critical section of the right. OS. Right. Now, the, the hardware execution unit does not know about it. Mm. And this is where you would need, you know, software's intervention or programmer's intervention to basically right. change right. or, you know, modify that behavior, that uh, out of order execution behavior for a bit. Enforce. Right. Yeah, enforce right. is the correct one. Right. And we do that. We do that by you know two things: the barriers, synchronization primitives, and there are attributes to guide that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Cool. So we we'll, again we'll see in detail. You know how do you go about doing that? But yeah, right. uh, that would be you know for later chapters. Right. And the chapter fourteen basically tells okay how do multiple cores exist in synergy and work right. in synergy right so there you know you would have like uh, terms like how cluster works big little okay big mm. little is a, a separate chapter here uh, mm. but you know uh, what is cluster how do you ensure coherency mm. uh, between multiple cores like for example you know if one core updates a cache line and same uh, other, uh, other core also had the same cache line how does the coherency work? Yeah, hmm. exactly. Hmm. Hmm. Fair. That would be there. And here I think on 14.4, it will also have a you know brief look into the coherency interconnects and you know different yeah, different protocols basically. And chapter 15 is very, very important. You know, it's basically this is what you know people are trying to achieve. To save power basically okay we have got right. this beast which can do this work but then we also have to conserve power right so it's like the battery should last right. for you know for, n number of hours right right and so this chapter will, will introduce us into what all power states the a class cores have and mm -hmm. how do you enable them and mm -hmm. so psci the last mm -hmm. uh, 15.4 is the programming interface Mm -hmm. uh, which goes all the way from, I think, uh, kernel to EL3 level, EL3 firmware, mm -hmm. and which essentially sets the policy, correct policy as to when a core should go into power saving. Saving mode. modes, yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, I'll move to chapter 16. So big little technology. Okay. This was something which I'm, um, you know, introduced uh, some years back. So initially, you know, when we talked about multiple cores in a cluster and, you know, that forming an entire system, generally we had the same replica of the same cores. So for example, you have like five, four cores and each of them would be of the same implementation, which would be A53. And that architecture was called, you know, homogeneous architecture. All the cores would be of the same type. Mm -hmm. But what happened was, uh, I mean, this kind, this was kind of use case driven where uh, it was realized that, uh, you know, the you the you the usage of a normal, you know, SOC is uh, workload driven. So basically, right. only, mm -hmm. I just wanted to kind of pause you to talk mm -hmm. about what SOC is. This is a mm -hmm. system on chip. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Mom. Hmm. Sorry. So any any phone chip, let's say, right? So uh, only on you know 
certain period of the normal day uh, throughout the day a user would play games it won't be 24 hour right most of the time would the phone would be idle so yeah. it makes sense to have beefy cores as well as you know low power cores in working mm -hmm. in tandem so when usage is high computational need is high you power on that beefy core make it do the work mm -hmm. even though it it will consume more power but only for that much amount of time and when the usage is you know very low you turn off that core and you know work with the little small core you have so now with this design they introduce something called big little technology where you have you know multiple cores uh, with uh, different design parameters different trms essentially in the same chip so one could be you know uh, a72 other could be a53 you know which is known to have consume low power one is known to consume you know very high power but give you more performance stuff like that in fact okay you want to add anything here Piyush? no i think that that's about it it's just i was going to mention that you know running different micro architectures together as it's possible. one yeah. yeah that is possible and that is what they are referring to the right people. exactly yeah. that's like Again, maybe what people can think of this as is when you're playing a game for example you need a chip or a, a cpu that can you know do things more efficiently and you know give you the performance and when you're not playing the game or not browsing the web let's say not watching um, uh, images and things not like applying that. dog filter cat filter something like that something. yes yes so at that time you know this will be in power down mode mm -hmm. And few of these would be, you know, handling the show. Yeah. Essentially. Cool. Right. So that's the idea. Of and this on. is, by the way, this mm -hmm. is called uh, heterogeneous computing, where you have, yeah. you know, uh, heterogeneous cores in the same design. So if you have different micro arcs, arcs. Yeah. in the same design, and again, you know, we should mention that when we were saying design, 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 we were talking about design of a multi-core system. Mm. Right. And that's where you have multiple CPUs. And then the question is, are they of the same type or different? If they are same micro arcs, then it's homogeneous. If they are different, as we talked here, so it would be called heterogeneous. heterogeneous. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. And yep. So chapter 17 is where, you know, we're targeting security. And this is where now we would see so initially, you know, we saw the transitions from, you know, one exception level to the other, mm -hmm. EL0 to EL1, EL1 mm -hmm. to EL2, and mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. In this chapter, we will get introduced to transitions between different worlds. So non-secure world and secure world. And here it kind of tells us what, you know, what care the software needs to take. Mm -hmm. To us uh, to ensure a successful transition uh, back and forth. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, chapter 18 is the debug infra. Uh, we are going to talk about that uh, as well. I I hope. Uh, uh, so there, you know, each core has something called ETM, embedded trace macro cell, and CTI, mm -hmm. uh, cross trigger interface. Uh, yeah, I uh, will not deep dive here. Uh, so these are the terms which you'll, you know, find in chapter 18 discussed uh, in detail. Right. So what is, go ahead. Oh, I was going to mention that the debug relates to how you can pause the CPU and then go check the memory yeah. or different states different. of the CPU registers. So on right. and so forth. So on, yeah, you can basically do a lot more, you know, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. You can essentially trace which route program took so you can oh. have multiple if else's you know branches and stuff like that yeah. you can essentially trace what what all instructions basically uh, a processor executed right and, uh, yeah you can single step through single the instructions step, yeah, so many things. set a breaking point on certain variable watch if the points. value change mm. yeah val watch point if the value changes then you know the program should hold something like that yeah, yeah. so all of that comes in the debugging convenience right, right. Chapter 18 is that. Exactly. 
and then okay, the last ahead. chapter i think this is related to the the fast models mm -hmm. so these are the so essentially uh, when you know let's say you are making a chip right uh, mm -hmm. a company is making a chip they want to be thorough before they submit their design to get the chips manufacture right, right and this is where you know these fast models come in play so what we do is uh, we sort of use these models incorporate them in your design design meaning here nothing is physical mm -hmm. there yet it's all you know emulated it's mm -hmm. all emulated at till gate level and mm -hmm. you take those fast models you plug in those design and you run your software you run your test to mm -hmm. see if everything is functionally correct or not all right so these are like you know libraries or i would mm -hmm. say software blocks Soft, yeah. that you can inject into your right simulation or emulation environment and then your simulation environment would be like a massive software mm -hmm. and then you can take your binary your machine code that you generated dump it on this software yeah. and this software will behave as if it is an arm um, machine yeah. it's um, almost functionally i would say as in our as... life in our life we have seen it's it to be almost accurate right yeah. functionally definitely yes like i mean pretty much as pretty seen much. from a software developer's perspective this is good enough yeah what happens then is the chip is getting manufactured and the software engineer is sitting idle so instead of that you know instead of waiting for this chip mm. to come here uh, you get started with the fast model and mm. by the time the chip comes you have the software yeah yeah that's the idea cool. yeah perfect i think with that we that are that was the last chapter yes oh, I, okay. I don't i don't see anything else here cool cool yeah right. So what we'll do is we'll let, uh, you know, kind of suggest rather to our uh, viewers that they go through this document, which will again be linked in the description mm -hmm. below. And, uh, you know, next time on, what we'll do is we'll revisit, uh, revisit, revisit um, the TRM ones and uh, the ARM. Yeah. Right? We'll just quickly take a look at those. Then starting like maybe third video from now mm -hmm. we'll be back to you know this document and maybe we'll start our discussion. deep dive yeah i think we'll so what we can do Piyush, you know maybe mm -hmm. you know we'll think about this uh, later yeah. as well but what i wanted to do was with every video we can you know if we can couple it with a demo small Some demo. demo yeah i think that yeah, would, that be, would awesome. be nice in fact, then maybe, you know, the three next two videos go into TRM and ARM. Maybe the third video goes into the bare metal setup of mm. the things. Yeah. And then starting the fourth video from the fourth video, we can yeah. go deep dive and a deep right. talk, like talk for uh, like kind of introduce the mm -hmm. documentation, understand it, demo it on the board. Mm -hmm. right. Perfect. All right. I think then with that, uh, with this, we can, uh, you know, close the video for today and we'll, you know, see people see you around next time. Next yeah. time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for yeah. staying till here. Whoever did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> and bye in bye. case you were sleeping, you know, wake up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.